everyone! My name is Julia and I am so excited to be joining you all today. I'm part of an outreach group that's made up of a bunch of folks from different federal agencies, universities, zoos, and other nonprofit organizations who are all working together for the recovery of this threatened species, the Oregon silver spot butterfly. Now this month, we've been celebrating Eric Carle's wonderful book, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, and learning all about caterpillars and butterfly life cycles. So I thought this would be an awesome opportunity to introduce you to our very own hungry caterpillar that lives right here on the Oregon coast. You guessed it, the Oregon silver spot butterfly, sometimes known as the OSB. Today we're going to talk a little bit about silver spot life cycles, why they're in trouble, and learn about some of the really cool ways that scientists are trying to help them. Let's meet the OSB. The Oregon silver spot butterfly is a medium-sized butterfly with orange and brown wings and bright metallic silver spots on the underside of its hind wings. The females tend to be a little bit bigger than the males, but generally they're about one to two inches long, so about the size of a little Lego man. They live in coastal meadows where there are lots of violets and other nectaring plants and can only be found in just a few spots on the Oregon coast and the northernmost tip of California. Like many flashy and beautiful creatures, these butterflies are a little high maintenance. The caterpillars are super picky eaters and only eat one type of plant, the early blue violet, which is its host plant. Once they grow up to be adults, they branch out a little bit and like to nectar on native flowering species like goldenrod, pearly everlasting, and California aster. During the summer months, from about mid-June to mid-September, you can spot the adult butterflies flying in the meadows. Towards the end of the fly season, the females will lay their eggs right next to the violets, and after about 16 days, the teeny tiny eggs, which are the size of a sesame seed, will hatch and the microscopic caterpillars will emerge. The tiny caterpillars will wander around to find a good place to take a nap, and then the caterpillars enter a stage we call diapause, where they essentially go to sleep for the whole winter. Once early spring arrives, the caterpillars will wake up and it is munch time. I don't know about you, but after I've had a super long nap, I am ready for a snack. Now, just like the very hungry caterpillar, these caterpillars eat and eat and eat and eat their way through five more stages of growth or instars. Once the caterpillars are ready to pupate, they build a chrysalis or cocoon or pupa, and after about two weeks, they emerge as adults. But these butterflies are in trouble. The Oregon silver spot butterfly was first listed as a threatened species under the Endangered Species Act in 1980. That was over 40 years ago, and since then, their numbers have only been decreasing. This is largely due to their habitat disappearing from housing development to agriculture to the spread of invasive plant species. Now, OSB are what we call an important indicator species, which means that how well they're doing can teach us a lot about the health of their fragile ecosystem. If we help the OSB, then we help all the other species that rely on the ecosystem that they share. Right now, there are only five populations of silver spot left and only one of them, the population on Mount Hebo, is able to sustain itself without any help from us. Scientists have been working for years to try to find a solution, from planting more violets and planting other nectaring species for them, weeding out invasive grasses, to working with the zoos on a captive rearing program, where they raise caterpillars and butterflies in captivity and then release them back in the wild to help wild populations. But there's still so much we don't know about how the silver spot behaves in the wild. So scientists picked a few questions to investigate that they hoped might shed some light. The first question scientists needed to investigate was, are caterpillars surviving the winter and how do they behave in the landscape? Seems like a simple enough question, right? But how do you study something you can barely see? Imagine trying to find something the size of this tiny hair clip in a giant meadow. Sounds impossible, right? This is where the story gets pretty cool. To help them find caterpillars in the wild, scientists from the Forest Service called on a very special group of co-woofers from the Rogue Detection Team, an incredible group of professionally trained rescue dogs who use their amazing sense of smell to track everything from live animals to scat, all in the name of conservation. By training the dogs to sniff out the caterpillar frass, which is a fancy word for caterpillar poop, Scientists were able to figure out where in the meadows the caterpillars were spending most of their time feeding. 
This information was hugely helpful to land managers and people in charge of managing the habitat. Last summer was a really special year because it was the first year they were able to train the dogs on live caterpillars from the zoo program. In just five days, Pips was able to locate 13 different caterpillars in the wild. Now an OSB spends roughly 80% of its life as a caterpillar. Imagine what we can learn now that we can study these little guys in the wild. Another important question scientists needed to investigate was once butterflies emerge as adults, where are they going and how long did they live? Last summer, scientists from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Forest Service, and Washington State University conducted a study called Mark Recapture Recite to study the adults. What this means is every day they would go out, catch wild butterflies, and very carefully mark their wings with a number. Then every following day, they'd go back out and see who all they could find again. Now, I wanna mention that anytime you do any type of work involving a threatened or endangered species, you need to work with special permits from the US Fish and Wildlife Service. All of these scientists are trained professionals who have lots of experience handling rare butterflies. This is not something you should try at home. During the study, every time they'd see a butterfly, they'd take a GPS point of where it landed. Note if it was a new butterfly or one they'd caught before, and if it was nectaring, they'd mark which species of plant it was nectaring on. By doing this, they could track their movements through the meadows and also measure how long they were living. Now, they're still going through a lot of the data since the study was just done last summer, but the preliminary results are teaching us some really exciting things that we never knew before. These butterflies are moving around a lot in the meadow system, and they're living way longer than we ever thought they were. In some cases, some of the females were still flying after six weeks. Considering many butterflies only live about two weeks, this is pretty remarkable. Now, all of the answers to all of these questions the scientists were investigating will really help land managers make a plan on what steps they need to take next. Do they need to plant more violets and more nectaring flowers? If butterflies are living way longer than we thought, are there enough resources in the landscape to support them through those long, hot, dry summers? All of these great questions. Now you might be wondering, what can you do to help? There are lots of things you can do. You can plant a pollinator garden with native species that flower late into the summer. If you go to a spot where silver spots are known to be flying, stay on the trail, watch where you step, and follow all signs to keep out of areas that might be closed for habitat restoration. Most importantly, spread the word. Tell your friends about the silver spot because the more people who learn about this species and get excited about protecting it, the more we'll be able to do to save it. And because everything is connected, other species will benefit too. Together, we can turn things around for the silver spot. Thank you so much for listening and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week.